Hey, I'm Nancy Cavey, National ERISA and Individual Disability Attorney. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, the Florida Bar says I have to give you a legal disclaimer. This podcast isn't legal advice. So I've said it, but nothing will ever prevent me from giving you an easy to understand overview of the disability insurance world, the games the carriers play, and what you need to know to get the disability benefits you deserve. So off we go. Shoulder disabilities can be extremely uh, difficult to work around, if you will. Um, that's because we use our shoulders uh, in front of us, above us, to the side, and a lack of mobility or stiffness can impact not only the use of that um, particular extremity, the affected extremity, but it also affect the use of both of your shoulders, which is called bilateral manual dexterity. That is really important in an ERISA disability claim. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Specifically, I'm gonna talk about, can you get long-term disability benefits for shoulder problems? Second, I'm gonna tell you the story about how MetLife applied a musculoskeletal and soft tissue disorder limitation to a shoulder surgery case. And I'm also gonna talk to you about how disability carriers will use medical improvement and uh, shoulder injuries or conditions to terminate disability benefits. Ready? Well, I think this is going to be an exciting episode, but let's take a break before we get started, okay? Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. MetLife applies a musculoskeletal and soft tissue disorder limitation to a shoulder surgery, a long-term disability claim. Shoulder pain can be caused by fractures, tissue inflammations, tears, joint ligament instability, and even arthritis. And treatment can vary depending on the cause of the shoulder pain and can even include surgery. Did you know that there are over 2 million Americans who have shoulder problems each year? And it's no wonder that shoulder problems are one of the leading causes of disability insurance claims. So before you stop work and apply for benefits, we've got to figure out what's in your wallet. I mean, what's in your disability insurance policy or plan. If you have a disabling medical condition and your doctor's told you to stop work, I want you to pull out that long-term disability plan or policy. I want you to read it cover to cover. Why? Well, you want to know what benefits you might be entitled to, but you also want to know, are there any limitations on how long you might get benefits? Disability carriers uh, have written disability uh, plans and policies to try to limit how long they have to pay benefits. And some of these policies or plans will have uh, mental nervous policy limitations, or they'll have neuromuscular, musculoskeletal, or soft tissue disorder limitations. And that's exactly what came into play in a case against Turner Industries. It's the case of Schmill versus Metro Life. It's a Louisiana case. And in this particular plan, there was a neuromuscular, musculoskeletal, and soft tissue limitation that said, look, benefits are just limited to 12 months. Um, if you have any disease or disorder of the spine or extremities and their surrounding soft tissues, including sprains and strains of the joint and adjacent muscles, unless the disability has objective evidence of radiculopathy. Now, radiculopathy is nerve impingement, tingling, numbness, that sort of thing. And disability carriers are going to want to see proof of the radiculopathy in the form of uh, MRIs and EMGs and nerve induction study tests. In this case, Schmill injured his right shoulder while playing catch with his son. He went, uh, uh, underwent surgery and he was paid short and long-term disability benefits. Once that one year rolled around, MetLife said to Schmill, hey, your benefits are gonna expire since it's subject to the 12 month uh, lifetime maximum benefit. Now Schmill filed an appeal saying, look, I'm mentally and physically disabled from all gainful employment due to multi-level shoulder, I'm sorry, cervical spine degeneration, radiculopathy with bilateral upper extremity, radicular symptoms, chronic right shoulder pain, diabetes, and I've even got some psych issues. He argued that his benefits were not limited to 12 months because he had objective evidence of radiculopathy with MRI evidence of disc bulge at C4, C5, C5, C6. 
So what did MetLife do? Well, MetLife had his file reviewed by a psychiatrist, a family medicine doctor, and an orthopedic surgeon. The orthopedic surgeon said there's no objective evidence of radiculopathy, notwithstanding the results of the MRI. And the MetLife liar for hire orthopedist criticized that cervical MRI on the basis that there was no evidence to support the cervical radiculopathy because there was no evidence of neural foraminal narrowing or encroachment upon an existing or translating nerve root. Now, what it was lacking here was an EMG and nerve conduction study test, which would have proved that there in fact was electrical evidence of impingement. What's the court do? Well, the court ends up agreeing with MetLife that Schmill's shoulder injury and subsequent surgery were subject to the musculoskeletal or soft tissue disorder uh, limitation. And they rejected his arguments that there was evidence of radiculopathy, noting uh, that the plan didn't specify that medical imaging confirming radiculopathy was necessary. Now, the judge said, even though the policy doesn't require it, you know, I'd like to kind of see it and I don't see it. And therefore, um, you know, I don't think there's any objective evidence of this radiculopathy. And as a result, the court upheld the denial. So it's hard to overcome these types of policy plans or limitations if you don't have the right kind of medical evidence. That should have been an MRI, maybe an arthrogram, an X-ray, an EMG and nerve conduction study test, because you want to, um, to slide into that exclusion of the radiculopathy. So it's a matter of proof. It can be hard to convince a judge to overcome these types of policy or plans limitations without the right kind of proof. Got it? All right, let's take a break.